Hi. I get lots of questions about downward facing dog. Well, not lots of questions, but perhaps the most common question people ask me about after class is something to do with downward facing dog. That's probably because it comes up a lot in each and every yoga class. Here I'm going to talk about a way to practice downward facing dog. It's not the only way and don't ever believe that there's only one way to practice something. There are always lots of ways. Usually people have, or teachers anyway, and you could consider yourself a teacher of yourself as well. Usually it's good to have a purpose or an intention about why you're practicing in a particular way. This way I'm going to show you my purpose is to help you free your spine so that it feels beautiful and lovely and to help you open the armpit area which can help for other postures as well. So if you're going to practice downward facing dog you don't have to have a dog near you but you will probably find that they become attracted to you as soon as you start to practice downward facing dog. And this is Charlie, he likes to come and practice yoga as well. Here I come up into a version of Downward Facing Dog, getting Charlie's approval it looks like. And I'm going to focus myself on moving my spine around. Here I'm really moving the ribs back and forth to show you the lower ribs move up and the lower ribs can move down. And now I've found a happy medium. That, what I just did there, which some people go, wow, that's a great Downward Facing Dog actually, that feels pretty awful. What I did was just shove my chest through to the floor. There I floated my ribs back up and instead now I'm pressing my armpits down. It's really difficult to see what I'm doing there with the armpits so I'm going to try and exaggerate it a bit. There's my me pushing my chest through so there you go pushing the chest through doesn't feel so good then I float my ribs up I move them back there that's the armpit movement down neck is free. Armpits up, armpits down. There we go. I'm really trying to exaggerate that for you. So you can see the movement and if anything's pressing down, I'm trying to press my armpits down to help free the spine. So here again, I am just showing some of the movements that the chest can do. Chest can push down, chest can float up. Floating up with the lower ribs moving towards the spine. Chest up, chest down, chest up, chest down, free and floaty spine. That's what I'm looking for, movement in my spine. And then I can press the armpits down from there. Armpits press down, armpits press down. But my ribs and chest can always move in freedom and that's really important. So I come back up into downward dog. First thing I want to do is find that wavy, spongy, floaty, lovely feeling spine. And then I press my armpits down. So armpits pressed down. I'm doing a lot of like flapping of my arms around there, but it's really just to exaggerate for you so you can see. The ribs are floating up. They're not pushing back. They just feel like there's floating and that my upper back becomes broad and free. Now this is a really important action if you're ever going to try and do some of the more advanced arm balances, forearm balances, like this horn stand that I'm doing here. My ribs move back there. If I push them forward there, you can see I've collapsed down to the floor and my head moves down to the floor. Ribs move back and float, press them through. Uh, it's not desirable to press them through in this position. You won't be able to keep your head off the floor. There we go. Ribs pushing through, feels awful in my back and the head I'm jet is on the floor. Ribs move back and there you can see my head is free. If anything is going to move forward, it's going to be my armpits. There we go, and you can see my spine is long and straight there. And if I wanted to, I might be able to tip myself up into a horn stand, but doesn't look like it's gonna to happen today. Oh well, I'll just be happy and content and not worry about it. Because I've got a free spine, it doesn't really matter if I go upside down. So apart from, you can, the armpit area is really important area to open. I'm going to show you this from another aspect, taking the arms overhead. I'm taking my arms overhead here, I'm trying not to pop my ribs out, which is something that commonly happens for a lot of people. That action there. 
the ribs just thrust forward. It looks like my arms moved back, but actually they didn't move back at all. My ribs just popped out. So let's have a look at that again. There, that looks like I took my arms back. I didn't move my arms at all. All I did was pop my ribs forward. So then I'd start to jam my spine. So you can see here, there we go, jamming the spine by just popping the ribs out. And it looks like I've done something with my arms, but I haven't. Here, there we go. I did move my arms then, but my ribs didn't pop out. That's the type of action that you need for the forearm balances. And for those of you who are practicing Urpha Dhanurasana, the back bend from the floor, it's also the type of action that you need so that you don't jam your lower back in when you're coming up from the floor in the back bend. So I spend a lot of time in my classes helping people free their armpits to be able to come up in Urva Dhanurasana and helping them free their spine. So I'm moving around, snaking my spine around, lovely free spine, lovely free, and when it feels right, up I come through there. My armpits really need to be open so that my spine does not get jammed in this position and it feels lovely and free. So have a look again. Free floaty spine, armpit area is trying to open but it's opening from a different um, angle here. So the armpits need to open for me to come up. You can see that there, there. My chest can come through because the armpits opened. If the armpit angle didn't open there, I wouldn't be able to get my chest through. And the only way I would come up is if I overarched my lower back and then I'd jam myself in the lower back. So what I want to show you next is a way, another way for you to try and open the armpit area. So here what I want to try and show you is a way to open the armpits a bit more. We're going to try downward facing dog from another angle where the weight is not coming through the hands. So just remembering that the idea is to have a free and floaty spine and to lengthen through the armpit area. So find a cabinet or you could even do this on the wall or something that's roughly about the height of your hips where you can make an L shape. First thing I do is find that wave through the spine, find that lovely gooey feeling of oscillating along the spine. And then from here, let's have a look at what often happens when we do downward dog. There, downward dog, a lot of us like to shove our chest through, or sometimes we get told to shove our chest through. It's not wrong, sometimes it cracks my back, but I don't like to hold there because it just shoves me in a position where I can't move. And this is where I can move when I press my armpits down, not when I shove my chest through. So armpits press down, armpit down, armpit down, armpit down, exaggerating again. Ribs can move back and up and down and round in circles like a wave. So the spine, if I can wave my spine, the spine is going to be free. This is just me showing you what your ribs can do, they can push up and they can push down and you want to find somewhere in between where the spine can constantly be moving where it's not stuck. So pressing the armpits down, letting the spine be free. Something else that sometimes happens in this pose or in downward dog is this action here. That's not me shoving my chest through, that's just me sticking my butt up higher in the sky and it's me overarching my lower back which is quite mobile anyway. Again it doesn't feel very good, sort of looks a little bit impressive but who cares about what it looks like, this is what feels much better when the spine is free. So try not to shove your bum up and try not to push your chest through. You can enhance the length in your armpits if you try what I'm doing here which is to turn my feet to 90 degrees, my bottom turns in the direction of my heels. I'll get a better view from this angle. I've got the toes pointing to the camera, my butt pointing away, and I'm trying to press the armpit down closer to the camera and create length from my elbow to my hip 
along that side waist. That's an amazing uh, way to open the armpit area and you come back to the middle and oscillate through the spine. And after you've done that, have a go at downward facing dog because your downward facing dog often feels a lot freer once you've opened your armpits on the wall like that. Armpits down, spine is free. Armpits down, spine is free. Find the wave in your spine, find the freedom in your spine and your practice will feel delicious and the spine will feel joyful. Neck is free. So I hope that's been a bit helpful. Have a look at my blog, don't practice anything that doesn't feel good.